Severance Pay Ontario and Bankruptcy Barrymore Furniture Unpaid Workers Angry Introduction On February 5, 2020, the Toronto Star wrote about the bankruptcy of Barrymore Furniture Company Limited, titled Barrymore Furniture Has Filed for Bankruptcy, Leaving a Throng of Angry Unpaid Workers in Its Wake. It talks about the sad story of this family-owned business going into bankruptcy. It also states that the workers will not receive termination pay, severance pay, or benefits. For the record, my firm is not involved in this bankruptcy file. The purpose of this Brandon's blog is to describe the sad story of the Barrymore bankruptcy and what happens to Severance Pay Ontario, as well as other employee remuneration, when a company goes bankrupt. But first, a little primer. Who is entitled to Severance Pay Ontario? Severance Pay is a settlement that is paid to a qualified employee who has their employment severed. When a long-term employee loses their job, it makes up an employee for losses, such as loss of standing, that happen. Se severance Pay is not the same as Termination Pay. Termination pay is given instead of the called-for notification of termination of work. Not everyone is entitled to severance pay. A worker gets approved for severance pay if his, her employment is terminated and she or he has worked for the company for five or more years, whether continuous or not, or active or otherwise, and his, her employer has a payroll in Ontario of a minimum of two and a half million or severed the employment of 50 or more workers in a six month period because all or part of the company completely closed. To determine the amount of severance pay a worker is entitled to receive, you multiply the employee's normal wages for a normal week by the sum of the number of actual full years of employment plus the number of completed months of employment divided by 12 for a year that is not finished. The maximum amount of severance pay Ontario to be paid under the Employment Standards Act is 26 weeks. The Barrymore Bankruptcy Barrymore was a Canadian producer, wholesaler, and had a retail store of high-end furniture. It started in business in Toronto going back to 1919. On November 29, 2019, Barrymore tried a business restructuring by filing a notice of intention to make a proposal. On December 9, 2019, Barrymore sought and received a court order enabling for an extension of time to submit a restructuring proposal. Barrymore had until February 12, 2020 to submit its debt settlement plan and other necessary documents. Barrymore failed to submit on time its cash flow statement as called for by the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. On January 17, 2020, Barrymore filed an assignment in bankruptcy. Barrymore filed its NOI to try to accomplish a few things. One, give it some breathing room from its creditors by invoking a stay of proceedings. Two, allow it to operate during the crucial holiday shopping season. Three, try to find a buyer for its business. The post-NOI period. Once the NOI was filed, Barrymore began a sales process to try to find a buyer for the entire Barrymore business. 17 parties were identified as being potential purchasers. Only seven were interested in performing due diligence. At the same time, the proposal trustee got proposals from two professional liquidators. They did that so in case no buyer closed a purchase of Barrymore, they could hit the ground running in liquidating the assets. Unfortunately, nobody submitted an offer for Barrymore's business. Hence, Barrymore's bankruptcy. Barrymore's Statement of Affairs The Barrymore sworn Statement of Affairs shows assets of only $240,000. The assets are inventory, 200000 and machinery and equipment, 40000 Barrymore has five secured creditors listed for $4.3 million. The single largest secured creditor is its chartered bank, 
with a claim of $3.7 million. Assuming the bank's security is good and in the first position, the estimated asset value of $240,000 certainly won't go very far. The sworn statement of affairs also shows 118 unsecured creditors with claims of $3.2 million. So with total claims recorded in Barrymore's books and records of $7.5 million and the book showing only $240,000 of assets, there is a huge imbalance. The family that owns the business is shown to be owed $1.7 million as an unsecured creditor. The former employees are also unsecured creditors. With that financial imbalance, it is no wonder the licensed insolvency trustee in the Barrymore bankruptcy could not run the business. Instead, it received court approval to enter into a liquidation agreement with one of the liquidators. The liquidation sale to the public has begun. Either the amount shown in the books for inventory value is too low, or the liquidator has the authority to bring in new goods to put into the bankruptcy sale, or both. It is too much effort to go through for inventory worth so little compared to the bank's secured debt. The former employee's claims. I don't know what the real individual claims of each former employee might be, but it can include wages or salary, vacation pay, termination pay, severance pay, and benefits. The Barrymore employees are members of the United Steelworkers Union. The Steelworkers Toronto Aerial C Council represents the former Barrymore employees. Both the union and the former employees are naturally quite upset over the bankruptcy. Once again, working people are victims of a rigged system that disregards their interests while giving priority to wealthy investors, said Carolyn Egan, president of the Steelworkers Toronto Area Council. Her comment is understandable. However, based on the sworn statement of affairs, it does not look like any wealthy investors are getting paid. Protecting Employees from the Bankrupt Employer the United Steelworkers and the Canadian Labour Movement as a whole have been lobbying for reforms to Canada's bankruptcy and insolvency legislation for numerous years to give greater top priority to workers and pensioners. I have written many blogs on the topic of how various federal politicians have put forward bills to give workers and retirees more rights. Several bills proposing such reforms were provided previously in Parliament, but none made it into legislation by the Liberal federal government. Rather, only some warm words and minor amendments relating to director responsibilities were included in the last federal budget and passed. To put it bluntly, the Liberal federal government has rejected enacting legislation to protect workers and retirees when an employer enters insolvency proceedings. The Liberal majority government showed no interest in any meaningful reform in the area of employee rights in bankruptcy or insolvency. Perhaps for their next budget, the minority government will be forced to look seriously at it. What happens if my employer owes me money and goes bankrupt? The BIA created a device for workers of a company that entered either bankruptcy or receivership and are owed money. It does not cover employees of a company trying to right-size itself through a restructuring proposal. The Wage Earner Protection Program Act provides for wages or benefits, including termination and severance pay, accumulated in the six months prior to the business becoming bankrupt or placed right into receivership. The WEPA ended up being law due to the federal government's previous concern that when employees experienced the company went bankrupt and didn't pay me wages, there was seldom an opportunity for employees to obtain any of their income owed. As discussed shortly, there are limits to or caps on what employees may receive. WEPA calculation. Who cannot submit? However, you do not qualify for WEPA if, throughout the time for which amounts owed to you are past due, if you were a director or officer of the business, had a management placement in the company, or were management whose tasks included making financial decisions 
on the negotiation or non-payment of amounts owing. WEPA Calculation Canada You could qualify if your previous employer has really gone into bankruptcy or receivership and you have overdue wages, salary, vacation pay, or unreimbursed costs from the firm throughout the six months prior to the date of bankruptcy or receivership. The WEPA gives funds to Canadian employees owed money when their employer enters into either bankruptcy or receivership. The WEPA provides a punctual settlement of qualifying employee earnings. The quantity of the qualifying employee earnings is an amount equivalent to seven times maximum regular insurable earnings under the Employment Insurance Act. As of January 1, 2020, the maximum yearly insurable earnings amount is $54,200. This means that the max amount of a former employee can claim under WEPA is $7,296.17 in 2020. Receivers and licensed insolvency trustees are required to tell employees of the WEPA program and provide workers information regarding amounts owing. From the day of bankruptcy or receivership, trustees as well as receivers have 45 days to send out trustee information forms revealing the amounts owing to each of the workers. So payment under WEPA is something, but may not fully compensate each former employee of the amount paid by Service Canada who administers the employment insurance system. The amount of $2,000 per employee paid out is a super priority against the current assets of the company. The balance paid out up to the cap is not a super priority. So in Barrymore's case, the total of all the individual first $2,000 amounts paid to each former employee will rank in first place against the inventory at the date of bankruptcy. This claim ranks ahead of all listed creditors, even the secured ones. Wrap up. Have you lost your job due to the fact that your employer entered into bankruptcy or receivership? Were you a director of a company that went bankrupt or into receivership and now you are being chased for statutory personal liabilities? Is your company in financial trouble and you just don't know how to save it? Is the pain, stress, and anxiety of excessive debt currently negatively affecting your health? We understand your pain. We will certainly ensure that no bill collectors call you. We will take all the migraines, stress, and anxiety you are experiencing off of your shoulders and place it onto ours. We will repair things so that you can march forward in a healthy and balanced way, pain-free, debt-free, and guilt-free. It is not your fault that you remain in this scenario. You cannot fix it on your own since you have actually only been shown the old methods. The old ways do not work anymore. The Ira Smith team makes use of brand new ways which will return you promptly to a hassle-free life while getting rid of your debt. Call the Ira Smith team today. We provide a totally no-cost consultation to help you solve your issues. We understand the discomfort your debt creates. We can also end that painful feeling right away from your life. This will certainly allow you to start fresh again. Call the Ira Smith team today, starting over, starting now.